great question. Um, I, I'm, I'm such a consultant. I'm going to say it depends. But what's great is we've got data to answer it. So if you can run a test where half the people see a video page and half of the people see a text page, you'll know with certainty which mm. of those experiences is better for your audience. Mm. So it could be that people need more context and they need the storytelling that a video can bring. Or it might just be very transactional and they can just scan the list of facts and say, perfect, I don't want to think about this anymore. Let me buy it now. Mm. So oftentimes in practice, it's going to be a balance because your audience will be some people who need to go deeper and some people who will just need the facts. So oftentimes we end up seeing a combination of video and text being the right solution. Mm, cool. So, so here we're talking basically about A-B testing, like you mentioned earlier. So how important it is to have an A-B testing? Maybe I would call it an A-B-C until Z testing. So, <laughs> so yeah. yeah, you need to keep testing, right? You need to keep testing and you need to know why you're testing and you need to test the most important things. So uh, it's the most common example when you learn about A-B testing is blue button versus red button. Mm. It turns out that's not usually very important. Yeah, usually yeah, what's okay. important is do they understand what your offer is? Mm. Do, they understanding what the, do they understand the shipping policy, the return policy? Have you had them get that emotional connection of understanding the core reasons your business exists? To those value propositions. So oftentimes, uh, you know, companies just getting started with A-B testing start really simple, but they can get really complicated and be full page designed yet you're comparing head to head. Um, but what it comes down to is what's going to add the most value for your customers and is it really solving a problem or are you just testing out different ideas? Mm -hmm. Could you, since you mentioned uh, the button, for example, uh, the order button on send this report to me or whatever it is, the color of it, is it red, is it yellow, is it orange, or whatever, is it black or transparent? So can you give us some tips on the things that actually should be focused on rather than the button sense? It's not like a big factor. Yeah, I mean, we do want to make sure the button is visible and easy <laughs> to find. And so like uh, the, the, the fastest thing you can do on your web page is to sit back in your chair and squint your eyes and see what jumps out at you. And what that's representing is what our pre-attentive processing does, so like what our brain is thinking about before we're actively thinking. And if the things that are standing out to you on the page are the headline and then the action, you're in good shape. That's a good basic principle. But oftentimes it's the image or it's some other action that isn't the primary. Mm -hmm. So that's a really simple, like, make sure that your page flow is pointing people to the next step you want them to take. And that visually it reflects that as well. It's not mm -hmm. using a lot of words to explain it, but it's saying this big thing, click on it. Um, you know, it's just, you notice it. That's how our brains work. We want to be guided. And that's a great tool to be able to make sure people are guided. Mm. So working with your client, mm -hmm. what of the things that you see doing wrong? Yeah, I think a lot of times um, they're sort of a, there's a there's a forgetfulness about what a new customer needs mm. because when you work on a business you work on a product it's so obvious to you that you are selling shoes like mm. you know it this is what the website is if you know the brand you know it and so you end up with things kind of getting in the way like oh we have this um, really new release about hand towels well that's not related to shoes so that could be very confusing to someone who <laughs> is there for shoes for the first time and so thinking through those lenses of what does a, like a returning customer need? What do they expect from my site? And then for folks that are brand new, are we continuing to provide the scaffolding and the help to move through the site to really understand how it all works? Um, you know, everyone knows Amazon in the US is like two day shipping, uh, and, but they still put it on every page, right? And it's just because we uh, we don't want any doubt. We want to remove doubt from customers. We don't want them to have to go find the answer. We want to put it in the path that they're going through our website. Mm -hmm. And so that's often the most common mistake is just assuming that if you say it once, people will remember. Yeah. And instead, we have to say it at every point that matters. 